start the recording. Oh, they're available to paid customers on YouTube. Oh, okay. So that's good knowledge. If you, how much, how, Natalia, how much does it cost to become a paid member? Is it dollars or eleven ninety nine per month or a year? So you can eleven ninety nine a month. You can uh, at the at the end of our and, and do they do they have like a, a thing where you have to sign up for a certain number of months? Do you know? Eleven ninety nine a month for eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. You can download all my stuff. Oh, that's cool. It's month to month. So, so there you go. If you look in the chat line, you'll see that you can uh, download all of the YouTubes from from this class for eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. If you cancel your YouTube subscription after a month, cool. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look and see what's up this week. Oh, let's let's take a look. We're we're working on individualized project concept design number one, part one. So that means that there's two weeks of this. There's part one and part two. Part one is pretty straightforward you're going to do some basic conceptual design and post your idea and then people will give you information back and next week you'll kind of revise or rework or make your idea a little bit stronger or maybe even just totally change your idea that's happened before too but it's called uh, yeah, isn't that isn't that cool? So that's that's how people get caught when they. So Natalia says, even if somebody deletes their video, you still have it as the download. That's why you only publish stuff that you're willing to have there forever, and that you are willing to have anybody in the world watch. Okay, so and and some people have found out the hard way that that is not um, not the best way to to do things when they find something that was posted years ago. So always be careful with what you post. Always be, you know, professional and follow our ethics policies and things like that. And uh, and then you're safe. Cool. Okay, so. Thank you. That's uh, that's good stuff to know. Um, so here we are. Concept design number one. I think you have a total of three or four of these to do. Part one, part two. What are we doing this week? I gave you a little preview. There's the, the playlist, but there's the what what to do. And so we require that you use the discussion board. And um, it's best if you can do it right there. But if you want to do a PowerPoint screen recording or an OBS screen recording or something like that, you're allowed to. Um, there's, there's some value in just chatting it out. So this one... If you'll notice, I'm just kind of blabbing away when I do mine. You can watch the video to see how it's done, or you can go to the discussion board. I guess I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, but but you'll have a have a chance to post your thoughts. Okay. And that's due by lecture time on Thursday. So you have to kind of thought things through. The reason is that we want people to be able to give you feedback on it. And I want to be able to give you feedback. Thursday's class should mostly be about 
listening and thinking what other people do Thursday's lecture. So I want to, I want them on there if I can, so that I can show you how to do the reply. That's what Thursday is about. Cause you're supposed to do a reply. Okay. Um, we have research, mass model and call outs and more detail. And, um, I've given you a submit your work. And I think I've even given you a sample to look at. I did make a sample, so we'll see if I have a sample. So let's get into it right now. <clears throat> We've got the program requirements. We've got the sample and how to get started on your research. And then I'll show you the discussion board. So program or client spec, or what the client needs, or what am I supposed to do? Those are all ways of saying that, okay? What do I have to do? What's the program? And when you hear somebody say, get with the program, will you? That's, that's what they're talking about. So let's see what it is. So I've made you one. And this is a laundry to landscape project. Okay, so it that's what you have to do. You don't get to do something else. You have to do something that is laundry to landscape. And RFP is a request for proposal. And what's being asked for is a design concept along with a visualization. Okay, now what you're going to see here is this is typical of a real request for proposal. This is what people do when they want you to make a proposal. And usually you have to give up your ideas for free. They're not going to pay you. And they're going to open this up to the community or to the group of people that are qualified to do this. And they're hoping to get four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10 really good ideas. And then they're going to pick the best one. And that's the person they'll pay to do the work. So those people who think being an architect is really cool, just know that requests for proposals, you never get paid for those unless you get the job. And so you factor that in to all the work that you do. And hopefully you're really good at getting proposals, but usually people get maybe five to 25% of the proposals that they put out. My niece is a landscape architect and she does very, very well. She gets about 45 to 50%, but most of her work now is coming from landscapers, the people that do the work, the contractors, that are, that are just telling people, no, you need to work with Claudia because she's good and that's who I want to work with. And so the people just do it. She's still at about 20% for what she calls a cold call when there's competition. But um, so this is like an RFP. It's not real. Uh, this was done years ago, and it wasn't done exactly like this. I've modified it so that it will be also educational, but it'll give you the idea. RFP, Request for Proposal. So what is the background of it? Usually there's something that's telling you about why this is happening. And recent, now that means for us, 2013, because this was first done years ago. But there are regulatory requirements from California Department of Water Resources. They're mandating water reduction targets throughout the state. Those mandates are still in effect. But what that mandate did was it allowed the districts to charge for projects that would reduce water. Before that mandate, they could only charge for the cost of delivery of water. 
So if a pump costs X amount to pump every day and the chemicals cost a certain amount and the pipes cost a certain amount, they had to figure all that out and that's all they could charge. But now they can charge more. They can charge you for R&D and work and advertisement to get people to save water. And one of the categories is residential gray water use. Now, as I talk about in the research, you may need to know what gray water means because it's very specific. And as you do your design, it's all going to be about that. So you're going to have to look that up at some point and know what gray water means. Okay. <clears throat> so the city of Davis. So Lily asks, isn't most water wasted by corporations? Hmm. Depends on what you mean by wasted. That's a very good question. And our seminar is a little bit about that. But I will divert for just a minute. The number one use for water in California is agriculture. Agriculture has reduced their um, amount of water per acre. But no, residence is not the number one use. Absolutely not. It's way, way down the list. Way, way down the list. Agriculture is our number one water use. Um, and agriculture over the last 40 years has per capita, per person living in California. Um, yeah, we do produce a lot. Um, and they've done an incredible job. If, if so uh, I know people and I've worked in the irrigation market what they can do now with irrigation compared to 30 years ago is phenomenal. And I actually worked for a tomato geneticist who worked on the drought-resistant tomato, which is the prevalent one that's grown in California now. Now, drought-resistant and taste good are two different things. The tomatoes that get done now... Uh, by mass, just don't taste like anything, which is why they put sugar and salt use. You're right. Well, you're going to talk. Well, let's talk about waste. So now, if I put five gallons on the ground and the plant takes up one gallon of it, what do you call waste? Hmm. There's an interesting question. Well, I don't know. It's going back into the ground and, and, regenerating our aquifer maybe what if it evaporates is that waste so so there are scientific terms that these things mean and when we talk about them it's really really important that we talk from a point of view of 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 knowing what we mean by a term so let's talk about um, industrial water waste. Most in California, industrial water is discharged either to a river or to a treatment plant, which discharges to a river, or to the ground, which filters things. So in California, our water discharge from industry is pretty good. So as an example, if you take, let's take um, a large tomato canning factory, that's industrial, uses a tremendous amount of water. I made pumps for that that pumped 25,000 gallons a minute of tomato paste, which was 98% water at that point. And then it evaporated it and got it all down and everything. And the waste stream from that place was almost nothing because they did what was called cyclonic, recy cyclonic recycling of the water that pulled all of the stuff out. You want to know why? It wasn't because they wanted to make the water clean. 
It's because every gram of material that they could get out, they put back into the process at the beginning for mass. Oh my gosh. If you've ever worked at a tomato processing plant, you shudder when you eat processed tomato goods. I've, I've worked at them and I still eat processed tomato goods. So there's very little waste there. Um, now, if we talk about um, agriculture, industry, residential. Now, what's the biggest cause of, what is the biggest use of residential water? Anybody got an idea? Lawn. Yep, because you're a, yep. Yeah, Lily, I know. <laughs> Lily says, yeah, store-bought tomatoes. Lily, those are the good tomatoes. The ones that go into making tomato paste and ketchup and tomato sauce and stuff like that are even more just tomato mass. It's really weird. Um, so Natalia is a landscaper and she knows. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are getting it, right? You, this water thing is a big deal. Um, so uh, lawns are the number one use. Number two is like a toilet. Number three is a shower and da 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 dum. Um, so there's there's lots that you can do on all of these things. Use less stuff. Now, if you look at per capita water use in the state of California, in the last 30 years, we've cut our per capita, that's per person use, almost in half. But of course, our overall use has grown like 10%. Okay, so that's because we have such a large growth in population. Yep, yeah, so you guys are all seeing cool stuff. Uh, people planting food on their front lawns instead of grass, things like that. I've got grass kind of in my front yard it's it's some natural weed that just grows i don't have a watering system or anything and after it rains or sprinkles my front yard is green for about two weeks and then it dries up and as soon as it sprinkles again it gets green and stuff like that and i keep it mowed um yep so these are all these are all good good things that we can do so now water waste water waste a good thing to do in part of your research is figure out what does waste mean and what happens if we divert it so we're going to talk about laundry to landscape and um san francisco you look they did a lot on it you might try to research what is what are potential problems for a neighborhood if you divert a lot of your water back onto your landscaping. And I'll just let you guys Google it and look it up and and see. Okay. But here's the get all of it. The city of Davis voted to apply an extra assessment to our water bills to fund certain research and capabilities and retrofit projects for these three things. Laundry to landscape, gravity feed, deep bed infiltration, and treated reuse. That one didn't go very far because it's really hard to use. It's hard to do. Treated reuse. So that's using your gray water for a black water supply. In other words, you take recycled water from your um, shower or your laundry or your bathroom sinks and you use it essentially to flush a toilet. Okay, but that one has a lot of extra stuff on it. So this is the request for proposal. 
says they want pre-approval packages. So they want a design that they can hand to somebody and say, yeah, we've looked this over. We've tried it in 10 houses. It works. We like it. We haven't seen any problems. If you do this thing, we'll just approve your project. Okay? Pre-approval package. And so what we, I've chosen to have you do is work on laundry to landscape. So you have to find out about laundry to landscape, find something interesting about it, and create a design concept for it. Not a detailed design, sort of like what we've been doing, sort of mass models, and you can point at it and... Yes, Lily asks a great question. Can you explain what laundry to landscape means? And I'm actually going to ask you to research it and find out, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay? So, we want laundry to landscape out of these three. We want a concept design that includes some sort of 3D CAD model, SketchUp, AutoCAD, Inventor, Revit, and you can focus on planting plans, irrigation and piping plans, laundry area designs for garage or living space, valve brackets, valve and bracket, or a retention plan. Retention is really a distribution plan. So what's available to you, okay? You need to present your research and your mass modeling and a de detailed visualization. That should really say annotated visualization. And I'm almost there, Lily. I'm almost to the point where you'll go, oh, that's what he's talking about. Okay, but now, after doing all of that, getting, getting that all sunk in, you know you're going to do three steps. Research, mass modeling, that's your rectangles and cylinders and maybe some triangles, pyramids, and then a detailed one, annotated or material. So. Here's your best source right here, the very first one. Click, click. That is laundry to landscape right there. Laundry to landscape. So, what does it start with? Somebody tell me. What does laundry to landscape start with? You can chime in on the chat or just unmute yourself. Yep, wash your water, says Olivia. Absolutely, it starts, whoops, starts right there. Okay, now some people say, ooh, I'm putting dirty water on my plants. Well, that's exactly what we did at the wastewater treatment plant. We used plants to clean water. They're great at taking certain things out of your water. And um, so is the ground. And there's actually bacteria that eats all this stuff. And it's good for your ground. Some people claim that it's bad to do produce that way. And some people have done studies that say it's absolutely no problem. Well, Olivia. It says we're trying to figure out how to do this in our home. Well, we couldn't have had a better project for you, could we? <laughs> so Lily says, do the uh, chemicals get filtered out before? Many research studies say yes, and many research studies say no. And many research studies say it depends on what part of the plant you want to use. Okay, so 
there's a lot to do to decide if you want to do this and how you want to do this. But that's not what we're going to go over much. It's great to be thinking about it, though. Okay? But we're going to start with laundry water. Now, if you're a person that puts tons and tons of bleach in your... So Aaron says, don't they have environmental safe soaps for this? Yes. There are many soaps that have been through what they call NSF, National Sanitary Foundation, testing that uh, absolutely pose no harm when ingested. They are not considered to be a pollutant or a toxin. So yes. Now, many people complain that they don't work that well. There's always a trade-off, right? You want whitest of white, you're going to get bleach. And tons of bleach is probably not good for maybe this type of plant and this type of plant, although maybe it doesn't hurt a tree. So um, this is where the landscapers, the landscape architects and the horticulturists play a key role in helping figure out what you might do. And that's why one of our requirements up here, one of our possibilities is appropriate planting plan. What plants would be appropriate under what circumstances and how would you lay them out and, you know, what kind of bed would they be in and how far apart do they have to go and how much water do they take? So if you understand what planting plan means, you would probably be a horticulturist or a landscape architect. You go, oh, that's the one I'm going to do. I got it. So, but yes, to Aaron's point, there are environmentally safe soaps. Now, if you've watched my video on this, I happen to have one of these in my house. I actually have two. I have one from the laundry, and I have one from a shower upstairs. The one from my laundry feeds a set of trees. Sorry, the one from my laundry feeds a set of uh, vegetable gardens, and the one from the shower upstairs feeds trees. I've got two different ones. But that's what laundry to landscape means. Now, there's some rules about it, and these rules are for City of Davis. But here's more rules and details about the rules and the actual ordinance that makes it possible to follow this and basic descriptions. And here's a big long presentation. From this one page, you should be able to really, really learn a lot and hopefully find a question or an item that you believe warrants a week or two of your design work. Okay? So this is where you do your research. And you can research into the plumbing code and into here and into here. And then you can start moving off on your research. But does everybody kind of see that this is a great starting point? You could also just type it into Wikipedia. But since this is for the city of Davis, I thought the city of Davis would be good. Now, I lucked out because when I did mine, the city of Davis didn't have a clue about this. I did mine in about 2010, and this came about in 2013. And so I went down there and tried to get a permit, and they just said, yeah, just come back with your plans when we know what we're doing. And about five years later, I came back with my plans, and they stamped it and threw it in a drawer. But mine happened to do this. So let's, let's, let's focus in on part of it. You could notice on here that there's some sort of weird thing here inside the laundry room that the laundry hooks up to. 
And if you if you kind of were keen on that, you'd go, oh, that's a valve because it either goes to my sanitary drain or out to here. And I got to have some way to switch those. There's some sort of a wall strap, which isn't really shown very well. And uh, some sort of a, a thing, which I don't know what it is, and a thing and some things. But then it goes outside and there's some piping. And it all looks like it's lower than this. And then there's some sort of a, I don't know what that is, a helmet or a bucket or a, I, I don't know. I do know what it is now, but I didn't when I first started. And, huh. So there's there's something to all this stuff. And then there's plants. And then there's like pipes that are laid out and Big pipes going to small pipes, I see. Big pipes to small pipes. Here's a big pipe going, oh, there's a small pipe. It looks like something where water is coming out. So if you if you stare at this a while, you might find something that is of interest to you. And then you can start asking questions to research further. How big is this pipe? How far can I go? I wonder if this has to run at a slope. What happens if it gets all sudsy and soapy? What happens if this gets blocked? What happens if it breaks? What in the world is this thing? says it's number 17. Where's the drawing that's got that? This is a big tree. I wonder how much water it needs. These are little. I wonder how much water they need. I wonder if I can control how much comes out of each of these or if it just droobles all on its own. I wonder how much, anybody know how much uh, water their washing machine uses? Olivia, have you figured out yet? 19 gallons. Jan, is yours 19 gallons per load or per cycle? Per load. Okay. Anybody else? That's 19 gallons. Mine's like three. What am I going to do with three gallons? Well, I happen to be a massage therapist also. And so uh, when before COVID, I was doing about eight loads of wash a week. So just from my business, I was generating 24 gallons. Um, and, and then I had my household stuff too. So I was getting enough for some stuff. 19 gallons, and then you got to figure out how many loads do you do. You got a lot of people living at your house. You're doing a lot of loads, hopefully. You don't have very many people. You might not even have a laundry at your place, and it might all be going into an apartment complex or a laundromat. But it won't matter. You're a designer. So these are all questions that you might be asking. What if this is hot water? Will that hurt anything? How do I switch it from here back to here or here back to here if I want to? What are these weird little things right here? See how there's tons and tons of questions that you can start asking. How high does this have to be for your water to flow over to here? So it, it's sort of like an isometric. So all of these need to somehow be lower than this, right? And then they have a couple of requirements here. There it tells you exactly what the gray water is.
You may not use spray irrigation. Can't spray this stuff. Because they haven't checked it for aerosols. Aerosolized detergent is probably pretty bad for people's lungs. So they don't want it being sprayed. No ponding. So you can't let it pool up. Exterior use only. You can't make it go to an atrium in your in your house subsoil irrigation so that actually means something does one of our landscapers can they tell us what subsoil irrigation means Yeah, it means below soil, but it actually has other stuff to it, too. So below soil irrigation requires some sort of a dispersal field around it. So when you look at the stuff and what it, anybody know what I mean by a dispersal field? You can't just stick this pipe into the ground and bury it. You have to have something around it that is what they call permeable so that the water has a chance to trickle out. And you're supposed to know the permeability of your soil. And you have to size for subsoil irrigation. You have to size, I call it an infiltration bed, so that the amount of water coming in can disperse through the non-permeable part before more water comes in. Whew! So usually what people do is they go, well, I got a 10-gallon washer. I'll put 10 gallons of rock down here. And that ought to do. And it does, mostly. Natalia, did you guys study um, that kind of stuff in your irrigation class? It's kind of off the beaten track, so I'm not I'm not sure if you would have. Okay, um, but there there there's stuff you do, and so but that might be something that one of you as a designer might want to look like. How do I draw up a plan that shows these things and let somebody know how they have to end their pipe? That's a cool design. And you can imagine somebody like Olivia, who wants to do this at her house, probably going, oh my gosh, you mean I have to I have to even figure out how to how to put the end of the pipe in? I can't I can't just dump it on the ground. No, uh, although Olivia probably actually already knows that stuff or she wouldn't be looking at doing this. Um, but, you know, you can imagine somebody coming in. I've heard all about this. Da, da, da. Well, how do I do that? Well, here's a simple little design. Figure out the size of your washer. Dig a hole that big. Put in stuff like this. Uh, you know, punch some holes in the bottom. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Olivia says she has a gopher problem. Well, you might just start filling gopher holes up with gravel and flood them out. But um, gophers are really hard to get rid of. Wow. They're really, really hard to get rid of. Um, and and I, know that, I know that from a friend of mine who has a small farm up a little bit north of Point Arena on the coast. And they have the worst, worst gopher problem. And, and of course, they're trying to do it without just chemically violating the entire property. OK, so that's a little bit on your research on how to get started on your research, OK? So what I did, I put a sample together for you. 
okay, so that you'll see. And I, I really did this because for many of you, this will be the first time you, you've done anything like this. Some of you have done this type of work before, um, but if this is new to you, I, you know, I'm right there with you. I'm going to download it so I can zoom in. So look how simple my design is. That's the level that we're going for. It's much more important to show me your thought process that led you to the design. Okay? And now look, my design is based a lot on experience, but I went back and I backed up all my experience because I've lived in this world for 30 years, 40 years. I've lived in this world for 40 years of valves and sewage and discharge and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but look at how simple my design is. Cylinder, 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 cylinder. Now, I haven't done any sizing. I haven't done lengths or diameters or anything like that. Just enough to know that this little clip here is going to clip on right there. And when you're done, you're going to take it off and put it on there. Very simple, little clip system. And I've already got five better ways to do it than this from thinking it through. So what is your research going to look like? You start off with the City of Davis thing. And I did a little bit of a thing to call it out. And then you choose what you're going to work on. I chose to work on this valve. Because as I was looking at this design, it struck me. That's complicated. And all I want to do is pump, use my washing machine to pump water out to the out to the the yard. Why is it so hard? Sorry about that. Um, and so I started looking at it. What is that thing? And it took me a while, but I found a drawing in that City of Davis thing that says, oh, it's an atmospheric vacuum breaker. And even though I do know what one of those is, I looked it up anyway and found out that whatever it does, it costs about $11. So I need one. And then this wall thing, couldn't really figure it out, but I kind of figured it's some sort of a clamp to strap it to the wall so it doesn't just flop around. So I found some of those. And then this valve, it told me as I researched further, as I looked at all those requirements, that this is a two-way or three-way valve. This one happens to be a two-way valve. And it's just called a valve diverter. It looks like that. Ooh, 32 bucks. And these things are unions. Oh, yeah. With all this stuff kind of like clamped into the wall, I got to have a way to get that off really easily if it plugs up. Hmm. So I figured that all of this stuff added up to somewhere around 70 bucks. And I go, wow, that's a lot of money. My whole water bill is only 10 bucks a month. So if I'm saving something, I'll probably only save a couple of bucks a month. 70 months, that's a lot of money. Maybe I can get it down to 20 or $25. That became my design intent. You will probably see other things. You will see different things when you look at this drawing. 
but come up with a bunch of questions that you, and you know, you might even know the answer to all the questions. Believe it or not, I already knew what that was. It's a vac atmospheric vacuum breaker. But I wanted to go look and find out where they told us. How do I know that? I used to design them. And I knew that this was a two-way valve. How did I know that? I used to design those, too. And I knew that those were unions. How did I know that? I used to design those, too. So, so this was pretty easy for me to research because I had an inkling. I had some background data. You don't have any background data. It's a little bit harder, but that's okay. But I want you to present a slide that lets me know your thoughts. That's expensive. How can I reduce that cost? I'll do it with a special clip and a PVC fitting adapter. So this is the part I'm going to make. And then I'm going to hook some PVC into that and hook some into that. This one will attach to the laundry hose. And this one will just hook into my waistline. And I just kind of gave it a little bit of a description. I did a call out, a little area of it. These clips go onto the existing drain pipe. And then a standard fit. Okay, got it. Hopefully that sort of makes sense to you after seeing this. I'm going to get rid of all that. And I'm just going to have something that drops down into the pipe, like a little U-shaped thing. And I'm going to clip onto it so that it doesn't, you know, sometimes washing machines kick a bunch of stuff out. and So there we go. Anybody, what's the first big question somebody's going to ask? Who's got the big question about this design? It's a what happens if question. No, that's your research, Jake. That's your research. Yeah, that's a great question. How does it get rid of the waste? In this case, what's it doing? It's pumping it to where? It's pumping it underground. So that's a good question. And you might want to look that up. Well, or the sewer. Yeah, Natalia says, or the sewer. It's either going to your existing sewer line or going to your landscape. And so that's just an awesome question. So that's part of your research. You might find out that just letting it dribble under the ground isn't very good and your design might want to be something about that i actually did do a little extra work on mine i do have a little underground gizmo that does a certain thing to make it work better well, that's kind of cool that's a good question i'll let you guys look it up okay but hopefully you see, this is the simplified version of this. And then here's the big question. So that was good. That was, that was one of the big questions. But I'm looking for the question about this. Well, my first question is, what happens when all the water overflows and backs up and comes out of this pipe? I just kind of clipped it in there, and if something plugs up or something goes wrong, 
Where's all that water going to go? It's going to go onto the floor of my laundry room. <laughs> so, so that's a question that might be answered that says, do I need something to collect all that water? Okay, that might be part of this. Or do I need a floor drain? Or do I care? It's my garage. It's just going to go out and down to the gutter. Ooh, pouring laundry stuff down your gutter. Hmm. Yeah, I might need a backflow preventer, huh? That's right. That was my life, too. So anyway, uh, none of these are super simple. But here, I had some questions about this. How big should this be if it fits in like a two and a half or two inch pipe? How hard does this have to stick on? So how big does this have to be and still leave a gap? How big is this to fit into here? What goes into the washing machine? I wonder how big these clips are. I wonder if I have to make a different one of these for every installation. I wonder how I'm going to make this. I wonder where I'm going to get these. So see how once you got your basic one, start asking yourself simple, simple questions. Okay, I can 3D print this part. That's not an easy 3D print though. So I've already got my next design iteration because this turns out to be a hard piece to 3D print. So I, I've, I've got another thing in mind already. Uh, you just buy these and you buy that. So that would be, that's another good idea because there are, when you start doing your research, you'll find that there are purifying tanks that work on a number of different methods to make sure that it's kind of cleaned up. And then you come up with the question, well, what do I do with that gunk? Hmm. So those are all really, really good questions. And so... Just from starting in one spot, you'll be able to go a long way, right? You can put, what? I mean, if you look at what I've written, there's all sorts of things. Maybe I want an injector device. Maybe I want a tank. Maybe I want a purifier. Maybe my purification all happens down here. Maybe I need, uh, it says you can't use an extra pump somewhere. So you're not allowed to use a secondary pump, okay, but there's all sorts of stuff. What happens if this sits there and doesn't infiltrate? Lots and lots of cool things. So this very, very simple, <coughs> excuse me, this very, very simple RFP designed me something to do with laundry to landscape could keep 50 people working for a year. Well, we're not going to do that. You only have two weeks. You have one week to get to sort of this point. Okay? So there we go. So now, there were a couple of questions Natalia asked, what do you put in here for the playlist for the week? What I would do is I would just go to, um, so, okay, so I hit those. Oh, I've got one more thing to show you. Uh, I'll go take care of this first. What I would do is I would just go to the playlist. What is going on? There we go. And just take a little clip of this. And, or, and, and this would be the link you put in. 
Okay, so you can just go to that and just take a snip of this and put it in. Okay, uh, I wanted to show you about the discussion board. So the nice thing about the discussions is if we go in here and you'll see mine in here. Oh, mine's the only one so far. It is, uh, I just want an explanation of what you found out during your speech. And then explain your design intent. What did you find? What's your intent? And everybody gets to put in a different thing. Now, it's easiest if you just click this reply button. It's not published. Oh, oh, look at that. No wonder nobody put anything in there. Thank you. Glad I went over that. Uh, now it's published. Yes. Yeah, that's what she just said. I hadn't, uh, I hadn't published it. So it's published now. So you'll probably have to uh, reload. And it should come back as published. Okay, so when you come in here, you're going to go to record, oops, record, and then just turn off your webcam, and you can just record right into it, and just start talking. It's that easy. You can do it from your web browser, okay? If you want to have your webcam on so people can see you while you're talking, that's kind of cool, too. There we are. Hey, look, I'm talking at you. That's all cool stuff. And you can see kind of my workout area and all that kind of good stuff. There's my sword back there. See my sword. You can see my rice. Chinatown. I got it from Chinatown. Yep, so that's kind of cool. Um, so it's kind of a mess, but, uh, it works. It doesn't let you do cool other stuff. So there's no re no reason to be, um, to be doing that, but you can just be recording. You go click three, two, one, start recording now, finish there and you got it. Cool. And so I'm going to close it without saving it. I'm going to cancel it. And so right now, your job is to put a recording in there and do it before Thursday because I want to tell you. Uh, so Rasul asked, do you need to show anything? You don't really need to. However, I did. Um, but you don't have to. You might want to like, Post this so that you can refer to it. You can see the washing machine that feeds through this to that and over to this, but you don't have to. This is this this example is really about talking it through. And the big purpose of it is so that somebody can listen to it with their eyes closed and try to imagine what you're talking about. And you should do the same thing. You should close your eyes and try to imagine what it is. Now, I have had people tell me that they go, oh, I hate my voice on there. I can't stand my voice. Oops. You can just type it in. Cool. Check this out. And I'll do, uh, I'll be Matthew. And you guys won't be able to hear this, but, oh, I did Ivy. Okay, but you could, you could, 
type out everything that you want here and and just record that or download it as an mp3 and upload so I'm, I'm giving you lots of ways to do it i want to be able to hear something but this is really cool i'm going to uh, i'm going to reshare this and i'm going to re do it as a tab and share the audio Because if you come down here and you listen to mine and you're in a hurry, Anyway, you can play around with that a little bit. If you're kind of in a hurry to hear what everybody said, you can play it at. So hopefully you get the idea. You don't need a picture. Uh, I decided to show the picture. Um, it probably makes more sense, but it does not need a picture. So that was a good question, Rasul. That was very nice. Any other questions? Yep, that, that was, wasn't it? Um, so, and I'm I'm sure most of you wish I would talk a little faster anyway. Because I drone on and you uh, but you can watch my YouTube's that way too. By the way, you can YouTube has that capability. I don't know if you knew that, but on YouTube, when you call one up, uh, somewhere in here there's speed. So here is the quality, but. I don't know if you guys knew about that, but but you don't have to hear me drone on. You can just zip right through it. Okay, any last questions before we call this one off? Okay. So what you're going to research about and the intent of what your design is. So you have to have a design intent also. So mine, the design intent was make a less expensive system to divert the water. Okay, so I can't just say, oh yeah, I'm researching about water, how it gets out of the out of the laundry and to the landscape. Okay, I, I focused down my intent, but that's why I want to have these in there by Thursday so that we can go over those and do what's called a critique. And I'm gonna show you specifically how to do a critique so that they're useful to both you and the person being critiqued. And it will help drive focus of the design. Because remember, we're still in this part of the design where we're going all over the place. I don't know where I'm going to go. Maybe I'm going to go here. Maybe I'm going to go here. Da, 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 da. But I'm going to try to focus. I'm going to at least try to get the intent down so that I can start working on that. And I might find that it's a dumb idea and come back again later on. But uh, that's how it's going to go. Does that help out? Was that at all a useful answer?
Okay, cool. Well, there we go. That was good stuff. I'm going to stop the recording.